Hi everyone, it's Lindy on from Pink Whisper Designs. Today we're going to make this cute little baby girl card and we're also going to reimagine one of our Halloween die sets to create this beautiful background. Let's go ahead and get started with the baby girl set from Art Impressions and look at this sweet little set. We're going to be using that little girl, the rattle, and that little pull toy. And we'll also be using a sentiment from that set a little bit later on. At this point, I hadn't chosen the sentiment yet. So let's go ahead and stamp those three items. I've placed some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock into my mini Misty stamp positioner, and I'm using that Stampendable stamp press to press that out. Now we'll be using the Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens in Sugared Almond Pink and Flesh Color to get started. And all of those colors I'm using will be listed in the upper left hand corner as we're going along. And of course you could use a water brush here to do your blending as well. So either way will work just fine. Now to create the background today, we're going to have a bit of fun. We're going to be using a Tim Holtz Sizzix die. And this is actually from his 2023 Halloween collection. And you guys know if you watch my videos, I always like to use things in different ways. So I usually keep all my dies out so that I can try to use them in a way that either I haven't thought of or outside of that holiday just for something a little bit different and a little bit special. And you'll see when we use this layered die today, we're going to get this beautiful soft baby background with the dots. And then we'll be filling in some of those dots with some sequins and it's going to be just so adorable. So again, don't put away your holiday dies. I just recently did a video where I used a Tim Holtz layered stripes die set and used it in a totally different way, created a vintage card. I will list and link that down below for you if you'd like to take a look at that. Because again, I really like to find different ways to use my supplies. I don't like to use them for just one thing. I like to buy things that I can use multiple times in multiple different ways. So again, I'll link, link that down below for you so you can take a look at that. And then I did the shirt and her little diaper with just shadows of light gray. I wanted to keep it mostly white. And then for the hair, I like to use a combination of the yellow and beige sometimes. The beige gives a little bit of depth to the hair and gives me a few little shadows. So I'm going to place both of those colors down at the same time and then blend those together. You can certainly place them down one at a time and then uh, blend in that darker color after you've uh, blended the light color first. But sometimes I just add them both at the same time and then I can come back in and add some more shadows as you see me doing there. So now I've got pale green and light green and I just have to do the little leaves on her, the flowers in her hair. And then for the little bear, I'm going to use beige and mid-brown. And this is one of my favorite combinations to get a really soft brown color. It just works really well. I can put those two colors again on at the same time and then just blend in towards the center of the face, keeping the center the lightest. Now to clean your blender pen, you just want to scribble it onto some scrap paper until it goes clear. And then you can go right back to your project. And you do want to clean that blender if you're changing colors. Just make sure you scribble it until you don't see any color on it. We'll just add a few little shadows to this bear and then blend that out again. I'm trying to stay in a fairly muted palette. Basically, the background will be that craft color cardstock a little bit of that beige and a really dusty pink with some white. And then for a little pop of color, I'm adding a little yellow and a little touch of green. So you'll see that as we go along. So let's go ahead and use that same, the same combination of colors. So I'm really not going to introduce anything new. I'm just going to use those same colors that we used previously and bring them into these two pieces. And do keep in mind that all of the products I'm using today are listed and linked down below, and they're also listed and linked on my blog. 
And then, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be using a sentiment from this same set. What's really nice about this little baby set is that all the pieces you need to create a complete card are included. You get several sentiments and then all of these little items that you can add to your card. And don't worry, the little boys weren't left out. There is also a little boy set. And again, I'll list and link that for you down below. And that little set is just so sweet. It has a little boy and he's holding a little car and he's got this cute little baseball cap on. It also has a little airplane, a sailboat, a little string of clothes that are hanging on a clothesline and then a larger bear as well and tons of sentiments. So again, you can have a lot of fun mixing and matching these two sets together as well. Let's go ahead and grab some detail scissors and we'll cut these out, leaving a little white border all the way around. So I did all of those off camera. And the next thing we want to look at is that beautiful layered die. Now again, this is the Tim Holtz Sizzix Thinlets Layered Dot Set. And as I mentioned earlier, this was part of his 2023 Halloween collection. And you get three dies in this set. That one creates the base for your layers, and then you have the larger dots and the smaller dots. For right now, I'm setting that smaller dot one aside, but we will come back to that in a second. For the base of this panel, I'm using some white Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. And then for the next layer, which is the larger dots, I'm using this really pretty Dusty Rose Pink dotted paper. And that is from the Art Impressions Easter Paper Pack. And look at all these beautiful designs you get. And these are double-sided papers. So let's go ahead and run these through the die cutting machine. I am placing these on a little bit of an angle just to make them really easy to run through the die cutting machine, especially when you have something really solid like this die is. So you really want to place that on an angle. It'll just make it a lot simpler. Let's go ahead and poke out all those little dots. And all those little dots that poke out would be cute on another card. So you may want to hang on to those for another project. But for today, we're just going to be using this panel. And look how pretty this is. So again, it looks totally different than that Halloween packaging that we looked at that was black, orange, and yellow. So have some fun. Dig through your stash. See what you can come up with. Try to reimagine it so that you can use it over and over again. So I'm grabbing another piece of pattern paper and that would be for those smaller dots. We're going to use that beige one with the white polka dots. And that, that is the mini paper pack from Art Impressions that I just showed you. And let's go ahead and run that through the die cutting machine. And now you can play around with whatever way you want to layer this up. So just kind of flip it up upside down and turn it around and see which angle you like the best. I'm going to go ahead and attach these two together. And I'll use my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive to do that. I'll place plenty of it all around the back of that. And then we'll go ahead and line these up. And again, I'm still trying to decide which angle I like best. And I just love how this looks. It's just so much fun. Sometimes it's hard to come up with different backgrounds, something unique and fun. And I just thought this was just so cute and sweet. So let's add some more glue to the back of this and attach it to that white base that we die cut earlier. That will leave a little tiny white border around the edges, probably about a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. So now I'm going to die cut that little rickrack border and that little scallopy circle. And those are from the journal template die set from Art Impressions. As you know, I love this set. It has everything in it you could possibly want. Some beautiful little borders. And we're, again, we're going to be using that little rickrack and that little scallop circle. So I selected one of those scallop circles. And then I'm just looking for a circle die that will fit right inside there. This is also from Art Impressions. And these are the nested circle dies. So let's go ahead and do some die cutting. For these pieces, I'm going to be die cutting them out of the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. I did end up die cutting three of those little rickrack borders. And I'm just going to use my poke tool to poke that out. And I've run these through the Sizzix Sidekick machine. 
So let's die cut a couple more of these. And then let's die cut that little scallopy circle from that same beige dotted paper that we used to do those smaller dots in the background. We'll also grab a piece of that gingham plaid. And again, that is from that first paper pack, the Easter paper pack. I've cut this, it's about an inch and a quarter tall, and it's just as wide as our base. And then what I'm going to do is layer those together. But first, let's stamp the sentiment. And again, going back to this baby girl set, we've got so many cute little sentiments we can use. But I'm going to use the one that says, sweet little one. Let's go ahead and place this in the mini Misty. I'm going to be embossing it, so I've got some pink and main anti-static powder. I'm going to place that over top. I've got the Versamark Watermark ink pad, so this is a embossable ink. We'll go ahead and stamp that a couple of times. I just tape that down with a little bit of temporary tape just to hold it in place while I do my stamping. And then we can go ahead and pop that out. Easier said than done, but we got that out. And then let's go ahead and emboss this. For embossing powder, I'm using this beautiful blush pearl powder. This is from Ranger. I'll sprinkle that on all over and tap off any excess. Let's go ahead and heat set this. I'm just placing all that excess powder right back into the container. I've got my heat tool and you want to get it nice and hot and then we can go ahead and emboss this. And you want to make sure it's nice and shiny when you're done. If there's any dark spots, you know you missed something, so go back over that. And everything should be nice and shiny when you've completely embossed it. I've got a piece of craft cardstock that measures four and a quarter by 11 inches. I'm scoring it at five and a half inches. And this will make a standard A2 top folding card. Now I'm grabbing that little scallop circle and I'm going to some spun sugar distress oxide ink and a small blending brush and I'll just go all the way around the edges just to finish off that edge. Just This will just kind of tie everything together. Let's go back to this panel and attach it to our card base. And again, that'll leave a pretty border of that craft stock all the way around the edges. Let's add our gingham plaid. Now that will only come right up to that white edge. So I didn't have it go all the way across the card, just to that white panel. So you might want to do it either way is fine, but I thought this would look a little better if I could see that craft stock border all the way around. Now I've got these little rickrack borders and I'm going to glue three of these down. And I thought these were just so perfect for this little baby card. They're just so cute. Now I'm going to snip away any excess again, right up to that white border there. So let's just go right in with the scissors. If you have some nice detail scissors like these are from We Are We Are Makers, they will easily cut into those smaller spaces. Now let's go ahead and assemble our card, just kind of laying these out to see where I want everything. I'm first going to glue down that little rattle and I'll just glue that flat onto the card. Because these other two pieces I'm going to go ahead and pop up. I'm just double checking the placement. I can slide that around a little bit since I just have some glue on the back. And then I've got my scrapbook.com foam squares. These are double sided adhesive and I'm going to place those all around that little pull toy. We'll just remove the backing and place these, place this little toy down. And then for the girl, I'm just going to use some foam tape. This is 3D foam tape. I just didn't want to spend the time with all the little squares and it's a little bit thicker so it'll raise it up at a little bit different level than the pull toy. So now that we have those in place, 
let's add the sentiment. I'm going to pop up both of these panels. Again, going back to those small foam squares. I'll remove the backing from these and then we'll attach these two together. And then you can place this anywhere on your card. There's a lot of different cute little areas you could place it. I did play around with that and then I decided to kind of keep everything clustered together because I do want to add some sequence to the background. So I'm going to pop that sentiment right here. And then I grab these beautiful sequins. These are from Spellbinders and there's, I believe, three different sizes in the package. These are the pink opalescent. And what I love about these is they don't have that little hole in the center. I've gone ahead and placed these all around into some of those little openings. So not all of them, I just randomly place them and I'm gonna place a small one in that flower in her hair. And that is just gonna give a little sparkle to this background and make it even more whimsical than it already is. I've got my Wink of Stella glitter pen. I'll add a little bit of glitter to these images just here and there. You do wanna make sure you clean off that glitter pen before you switch to the next color. And you just do that again, same way you would clean off your blender pen, just scribble it onto your scrap paper, and then you're good to go. And now I've got my white gel pen, and I'll add a few little highlights with the gel pen. And this will just make everything pop out a little bit more. And once that's all set, I did decide to come back and put a couple little white dots in her eyes there just for a little bit more reflection. Let's take a look at the finished card and you can see how cute this is. And again, going back to that layered dots die set, look how completely different it looks. And you could do this in any combination of colors. For the little boy card, you could use the same craft colors and just add a light blue dotted paper. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. As always, thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.